Hey everyone, it's the second Saturday in January 2023. It's uh, actually sunny outside and it seemed like the perfect day to give you a tour of my garden, what's growing outside, what seeds do I have started inside, um, just taking a look at things. Besides, who doesn't want to see Marjorie run around the backyard? <laughs> So my house uh, in the backyard is facing south, so this way is south, which means all of the backyard and garden get the brunt of the sunshine in the summer, which is fantastic. That's what I want. Now in the winter time, because we're, you know, far north above the 45th parallel and all that good stuff, so the sun is like right there. But in the wintertime, these trees back here throw shade on the yard um, quite a ways up the yard. In the summertime, the shade like barely touches the grass. So it's quite a drastic um, distance there. So I consider these two beds here my main beds because uh, all year round they have the potential to get sunshine. Now if it's cloudy and rainy, there isn't going to be much sunshine at all. But they're in an area where if it's sunny, they're going to get touched by sunlight, just like they are now. So I'm going to start my video tour over here, circle around the yard, back up here towards the front of the house, or sorry, up towards the house. <laughs> There's Marjorie. Uh, and then we'll go to the front yard because I have some stuff up there too. So over here, um, I used to have a bird feeder hanging on this um, here. Now I have a hummingbird feeder, but I used to have a bird feeder with seeds. And turns out um, the seeds they would drop on the ground attracted a family of rats. So I have done away with that, and now I only feed the hummingbirds and the bees. So, uh, yeah, that's a thing. But uh, last year in the summer time, I had this bed right here full of tomatoes, just massive amounts of tomatoes. It was fantastic. Um, I put a cabbage seedling in here. Um, this bed here last spring was full of cabbage and lettuce um, and things like that. And these two uh, cabbage plants here, um, I cut down, like I harvested the head of cabbage, I cut it all the way down. And then throughout the summer, they just kept growing back. And so I just left them because I thought, well, let's see what happens when they try to grow back. So you can see that it's, it's a mass of leaves. And I see maybe the potential for like three different heads of cabbage to come off this. Uh, but I don't think it has enough sunlight and energy to really make three full heads. So maybe we'll get some small heads off of that one. Oh, this one. See, I couldn't see this from the other side. I need to take off these brown leaves and put them in the compost pile. Oh, wow. That one's already detached. Look at that. Oh, that's going to be so tasty. <laughs> Yeah, the cabbages are doing great. So these, I did not plan for um, a second harvest, but you know, happy surprise and I'll take it. Here's a um, third cabbage plant that's just kinda, I don't even know if this is cabbage, maybe this is broccoli. I don't know, it's not really growing very well, but I, I've got nothing else to go in this bed at this point. So I'm just gonna, you know, see if it grows, cause why not? I also sowed some carrots underneath the tomatoes and I'm still working on them. Um, they've made it through the winter and basically if I just leave them in here, they just keep growing. Um, I do see signs of ground moles showing up near the garden, so it is something I should be mindful of that they might be down there snacking on these things or something. So here we are on the east side of the yard, and um, you can see that this bed has the potential to get sunlight, but because of the way the ground is um, from plot to plot, 
to plot. We're, we're on a hill here, so every yard kind of tears down. And so um, the neighbor's garden here uh, shades this out a bit. And in fact, uh, at some point here, she'll put peas in there on a big old trellis, and it'll provide lots of shade here for this bed. So I have learned that I can't really plant things that need a lot of sun right here. Uh, but it's good for things that want some shade, like uh, lettuce. So um, I think I'll probably utilize this east side for things like that. I did plant garlic throughout here in little patches. And so uh, I've got some compost on top of those patches. And the compost is just sprouting all kinds of weeds and grass and growth. Um, so it's, you know, it's good, rich, fertile compost, but I will have to fight the weeds. So back in the southwest corner of the yard, we've got my compost bins. And Michael built me these bins out of um, old pallets. And we put um, tiles down underneath to try to keep rats out from burrowing in and, and all that good stuff. Um, and these are just so awesome. Um, I'd love to have a third one, but space and also two is working great for right now. Um, this is my bin full of fresh stuff. Uh, we had a few windstorms. Uh, yeah, in January, these, these past couple of weeks, we've had a few windstorms. A bunch of tree branches got knocked down from that pine tree and that pine tree <laughs> um, and so I broke down the smaller ones and put them in this bin and the larger ones I'm probably gonna strip off the greenery and use the limbs for supports for plants so they're just hanging out here until I feel like dealing with them um, so this is my new pile uh, so I stopped adding to this pile in December and so with the new year, this pile got turned over into the other bin. Um, and it's just, you know, breaking down. Not everything is fully broken down, but she's at 60 degrees right now. And the air temperature is in the 40s. So um, she's still putting off a little bit of heat. I've already taken some of this compost out. This was taller. And you can see how it's kind of flat on the top. I took a bunch of this out to feed one of the garden beds in the front yard, and I'll show you that. But, uh, yeah, very much fresh and not broken down at all. And broken down. I love my compost bins. Uh, I just witnessed a seagull pooping in my neighbor's yard. Wow, that was interesting. I'm sad I didn't catch that on camera, actually. <laughs> okay, so still in the southwest corner, but um, here are some bean plants. I just, um, they didn't really get to grow and harvest enough um, beans from them, so I just left them here to break down over the winter months. Um, this, you can see this bed is full of weeds. Um, I did put compost down. While we were building these compost bins, this area served as temporary storage for the compost. And so when we moved the compost back into the bins, it didn't all get transferred. So this all pretty much got composted over the summer. And you can see lots of weed growth. Now, I was gonna go through here and rake this. I raked the east side of the garden, of the weeds. But on the east side, I could clearly tell where I planted the garlic. Here, I have no idea where I planted the garlic because I didn't label it or mark it in any way. So I'm afraid of raking the garlic up on accident. So this is just going to grow out of control, basically, because that's what weeds do. Um, until I can find out where the garlic is. And then I can weed around it. Uh, but this time, instead of putting in one big old patch of garlic, I decided to spread them out throughout the garden. So they're in small patches kind of everywhere. I've got kale, I've got cabbage, I've got broccoli. Um, I've got one little lettuce plant left. The others, um, there was one here, 
one there. They were sparsed out. Um, the lettuce all got wiped out in the frosty weather we had around Christmas. Um, we got hit with a bunch of freezing rain and yeah, the lettuce didn't like that. But the kale is fantastic. And I came out and harvested some kale and I made kale chips and they tasted amazing. So, yep, kale. Now that we're getting more sunshine and warmer temps, these are just gonna grow, 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 grow and give me lots of kale. Here are some cabbages. I plan on cabbages all being here in my cabbage patch, <laughs> uh, but I had a couple left over, so they went over here, um, and they're doing pretty well. But these cabbages are doing the best. Um, yeah, they're just fantastic. I think maybe some of that could be because of this bed being right next to the house. It provides a little bit more shelter and protection. Um, a little bit more warmth from all that freezing rain weather we had. Um, but the cabbages, y'all, I am just so excited to have some big old cabbages this year like I did last year. I love to make egg rolls. I use cabbage and pork and it's just fantastic. And this year I want to try making sauerkraut. So, yep. Um, in the back row behind the cabbage are Brussels sprouts. Um, I have not mastered the art of growing Brussels sprouts, but I am doing better this year than last year, so I'm making improvements, but I feel like I definitely didn't plant these all out early enough. I thought I was going to be able to harvest this whole bed before winter, um, and you can see that that did not happen. <laughs> so, yeah... So here's our trellis bed. Michael built this for me also. Um, so it's got a built-in trellis on it so I can grow things like cucumbers and peas and pumpkins or what you know whatever I might need to have climb up a trellis. And I decided this year to put um, some of the garlic in here to start. And so I planted the garlic all in the front along the front edge of this trellis bed here. Yes, it's covered in weeds because I put compost in here. <laughs> so it's covered in weeds. Um, usually by this time, the garlic is like three inches tall or something really easy to see where it is. But for some reason this year, it's, it's like barely got any height to it. Hang on, I came out to find one early. Oh yeah, here's one right here. See it? That's my garlic. Barely, barely coming up. But it's there. And then, oh yeah, here's another one. Like just barely, see it's this thing here. Just barely coming up. Reaching for the sunshine. Here's another one. Not that. <laughs> yes. yep. um, so it's hard to tell where it is. And I planted out the garlic the same time of year. I have been for the past two years that we've lived here. Um, so it's not the time that I planted it. I, I think it's the weather, honestly. I think it's because it just went from warm to cold so quickly that it really put a lot of shock into some of these plants. But, uh, yeah, I'm excited. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but uh, when I put my compost out in my beds, it's not fully decomposed down. I got leaves in here still. Here's a peanut shell. Um, and some... This is from um, some of the hostas out front. Um, I cut them down and I let them break down in things, tree bark. And um, I just let it break down a lot, but there, the nutrients are in here and it's going to just break down over time more and more. Honestly, when I have the luxury to wait for it to fully break down, I will. <laughs> but right now, 
I've got more garden space than I have compost and so as soon as I can get it out here I do so I've just left the backyard to come out into the front yard I'll show you we got a little fence gate there so I've got a little garden bed here it's on the corner of the driveway. And there's the front of our house. And so in here, I have tulip bulbs planted. I put these out last, last fall. So in 2021. And they were beautiful in the spring. So I came out and put um, a fresh layer of compost down over this whole thing. So I've got tulips and daffodils, and they're mostly around the, the corner here. Um, I've also got dahlia tub tubers in there. And last year I tried to grow some cotton in this bed, and it did not take at all. So, um, but, but I know this, this bed needed some compost on it, a little more food for, for the flowers. So it's going to keep raining all week long. So it's just going to take these nutrients and just put them in the ground and the plants will be able to tap into it. So I'm looking forward to some beautiful pink tulips and yellow daffodils. And then over here is the bed on the side of the house. So leading up to the house here on the side. So this marks the property line here. I've got some, um, this seemed to stay green okay on the ends, but this is just a, I don't know the name of this plant, but it's a low to the ground. It gets really pretty blue flowers on it. Um, this fall, I did come through and plant some tulip and daffodil bulbs sporadically throughout these beds. So in the springtime, this should also fill up with color. And I just noticed Look at that. See that? Something's st starting to pop up out of here. That's awesome. Um, I also have some dahlia tubers in here, which I will need to take out and move because they're just going to crowd out all of this stuff. Uh, I want to take them out. There's space at the back of the bed, so I'm going to move them back there. Um, this is my hydrangea. And it is getting some new growth buds on here oh yeah fantastic um so yeah it shed all its leaves for the winter and we're gonna get some new growth back here this limb looks like maybe it's dead but i'm not gonna cut it now just in case we get stuff off the side there these are my roses um, so this gave me some really pretty yellow roses last year. I need to come out and clip off, clip off these dead flowers. But you can see new growth on here as well. So it's very much starting to look like uh, the beginning of spring around here. Which is pretty nice. Um, I've got some mums in the house I'm hanging on to. They're going to go out in that front bed, too. Uh, this is all lined with hostas. All along here, all lined with hostas. As you can see, the trimmings where I trim off their stems in the fall. And they just all grow back. So those will start coming up soon. And just fill this whole front bed with hostas. Uh, in the red round pots, I've got strawberries. I need to find a more permanent place for those, but for now they're just hanging out in pots. And then I filled these with carrots. Just because I really wanted more carrots. And I think it's a nice decorative greenery that works well in the front yard too. So, you know, double use, why not? That's my rhododendron bush. I cut the crap out of that last year <laughs> it was way overgrown and uh now it's very nice so most of the good stuff is inside so i've got all kinds of seeds started 
I've got basil plants. I've been growing throughout the winter, just trimming some leaves to use in dishes. I got some parsley. So I put more parsley seeds and more basil seeds in with these guys. But for the most part, let me get these out of the way. Oh yeah, my Venus flytrap. That's fun. But I got all kinds of seeds started, as you can see. New batch of kale and lettuce and broccoli. We've got cilantro. I think, well I planted oregano here. I think this is oregano. I can't tell if it's weeds or oregano. Cotton. Lots of cotton starting to pop up. I got dill. I don't know why, but last year it was impossible to find fresh dill in any of my local grocery stores. Absolutely impossible. So I need to grow my own. Spinach, trying to get some onions, peppers. Last year I did not start my peppers soon enough, so I planted them first week of January. Second week of January? I don't know. Um, yep, so it is seed starting time, so most of the plants are inside. And they won't go outside until it's warm enough, Marjorie. Yeah. So that's the state of the garden in January 2023. Um, starting to get sunshine, still lots of rain. Lots of gray days and rain, which means things that are already out here aren't growing very quickly but they can withstand the cooler temperatures we do get here, the occasional snow and frost, and so it's good to know that I can actually grow these things through the winter to harvest in early spring, so um, I'm really excited to keep trying and learning what works and what doesn't work, and um, just grow a bunch of food, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I look forward to showing you how much the garden changes from now until February. So so the next video I put up will be crafty related. Uh, I figure I'll give you a tour of the garden every month uh, in the middle of the month just for folks who are interested in, in gardening and what I might be growing and uh, making with food. Um, right now there is no food production because there's nothing coming out of the garden. But I am definitely eating up the tomatoes I canned, um, drinking the Bloody Mary mix that I made. I mean, I had so many tomatoes. I made pasta sauce and, oh my gosh, pickles. I made pickles out of the cucumbers. And so um, I'm eating through my stores, emptying the jars and setting them aside for next year. So um, stay tuned for more on all of that stuff. <laughs> So until next time, stay safe, stay well, enjoy your crafts and your gardening, <laughs> whatever you might be into. Bye guys, take care.